Hello everybody, welcome back to the Traction YouTube channel and welcome to week 9 of our fixed Ferrari track guide series here on iRacing. Now week 9 brings us to the beautiful Laguna circuit. It's beautiful, a beautiful circuit, but not my favourite circuit to race on. You've always got to rely on somebody making a mistake and it's your job to make them make a mistake. So if you've followed my track guides before, you'll know that they are not a place for hot laps. It's a slow, methodical approach to learn the circuit where I talk about my braking markers, my reference points, and the little quirks that each circuit has. As usual, I'll show you the flying lap in full. Then we'll jump in the car, do a few laps, and show you those braking markers and reference points in action. For information, the flying lap that you're going to see was done on lap 10 of a run. If you are watching any track guides, be very mindful of the tyre temperature and the tyre condition of the car that's doing the fast lap. I shaved off probably half a second, six tenths with fresh tyres on the lap that you're going to see now. So bear that in mind. So this is a true reflection of a lap that you need to be following. So let's get on track. So here we are then on the main straight here at Laguna Seca. As usual, we've set the sim time to match the official series. So it's the 13th of November, 2021. And the time in the sim is 12.25 p.m. Track temperature right now is 33 degrees, which is exactly the same as it was in the flying lap. Brake bias this week, we've gone down two clicks to 53.7. Lots and lots of trail braking here. You need lots of weight over the front end to get the grip on the front tyres. 53.7 is where I'm at this week. Laguna Seca. Not one of my favourite tracks, as I mentioned at the beginning. Really easy to make mistakes, really easy to overdrive. So, this is turn number one. This little curve. All you want to do is hug the left-hand side all the way around. As soon as we get to this point, we can then move over... To the right hand side and our braking market is round about the number four just after where there's a white line there going across the just in front of the number three we're going to be breaking down all the way down to first gear for this one but be nice and gentle nice and gradual with your downshifts it doesn't matter too much you don't hit this apex now there's a few ways around this turn we can hit the apex go really deep then cut it back we can Take a really wide line all the way around, or you can miss the apex, which is usually what I do. Miss the first apex, but as long as I hook up the second one, I'm a happy man. So trail breaking all the way around, nice and gentle. Be really patient, wait for it to come all the way back around. And then if you hit the second apex, you're right back on the gas, everything's good. Move the car right over to the left-hand side, as quick as you can, ideally, because we want the car nice and settled in a straight line when we're braking. We don't want to be... Coming across to this curb, 
getting on the brakes, then changing direction. It just unsettles the car. So the sooner you get your car over to the left-hand side, the better. Braking here is round about the two. We're going to be trail braking to the apex. Now, a little trick with Laguna Seca. If you look at the curbs, you can see that there's a white triangle at the end. You can pretty much use that as your turning point for every turn. That's pretty much where you're going to be turning in everywhere. So we're braking at the two. And we're going to be trail braking to the apex. Try not to hit the curb on the right hand side here. It does unsettle the car. Nice and smooth with the accelerator coming out of here because you will lose a bit of traction. So all the way onto the curb, but then make sure you get your car back off the curb. And then we're going to be going back on the curb up to third gear here. And again, we're just going to be trail braking a tiny bit. Just take a little bit of speed off. You can clip this curb on the right hand side there, the red sausage, that's fine. Then back on the gas, let the car run all the way out wide onto the curb on the left hand side. So for turn number five, move the car right over to the right hand side. And our braking marker, there is a white line there between the two and the three. That's going to be where we're braking there, just above the dashboard. That's going to be our braking marker for turn number five. We're going to be braking in a straight line down to second gear. And we're going to be nice and tight here because there is a bit, quite a bit of camber on this turn. So we want to be using the curb on the left hand side and see how much the, the road surface is cambered there which means you can get on the gas a little bit sooner than you would think. Get on the gas, all the way up to third gear, use the kerb on the right-hand side there, then up to turn number six, the kink, one of the most tricky um, turns on the circuit, but I, I find it much harder when I'm driving a Mazda MX-5 because it's all about momentum. Here, you've actually got to brake a little bit, and these cars are so fast that you can catch up if you do make a mistake. So here... On a flying lap, you'll see that there is a small piece of rubber or the, the curb on the right-hand side is rubbered round about the two marker. That wants to be in your peripheral vision. That's where we're going to be breaking a little bit and starting to turn in. And we don't want to hit the curb, the sausage curb on the left-hand side because if you do, you're in a whole world of trouble. But we want to be getting our left tyres on the blue and white curb on the left-hand side right here in the dip. And as soon as you do that, right back on the gas keep turning left don't straighten up your steering keep turning left the car will push out wide and if you get it right then you'll hit a bit of this curb on the outside you can accelerate up the hill with the infamous corkscrew now a lot of people struggle with this but it's actually quite simple so we approach it in a straight line over the crest it's all blind our left tires on the curb on the left hand side Want to be aiming for just to the left of the three. And we're going to be braking round about here, but nice and gentle. I probably don't go over 50% braking at this point. And as we brake quite hard here, then a little lift of the brakes just as we go over the crest. And then back on the brakes here. And then a quite, quite a late turning. You can cut this quite a bit. Now, as we go left here, you can see there are two or three trees, actually. Well, the one on the right-hand side... If you aim your dashboard at that tree right now, we can't see the apex coming out of the corkscrew. But if we aim our car at that tree, then we're pretty much going to be on the apex or the exit of the corkscrew. Nice and gentle with the throttle. Short shift to second gear is just before we go down the hill. Then accelerate all the way around here. And then... a little bit of trail brake just to get the car back to the apex but then back on the gas hard here in third gear just leave it in third gear move the car back over to the left on the curb and as soon as we get on the curb we're just trail braking try not to hit the curb on the right hand side get on the gas here as well because it's all cambered those turns and move the car back over to the right and this is one of the places where it's really easy to get greedy you always think you can brake a little bit later than you can and yes with a lower brake bias, we could probably brake between the one and the two, but everywhere else in the lap would be compromised for this one turn. So I brake round about the two, get my right hand side tyres on the kerb on the right hand side. We're going to turn in quite late, take a little bit of this kerb on the on the entry, but then we're going to accelerate and use this AstroTurf on exit. Now this used to be an off track here at Laguna Seca, but it isn't anymore. So make sure that you use this piece of AstroTurf. And that's a lap. Right. So we'll speed up a little bit now. So 
over the hill, over turn number one. We're going to be hugging the left-hand side. They're moving over to the right. Our breaking mark is there. Again, it doesn't matter if you miss this first apex, but be nice and patient here. Let the car come all the way back and then get on the gas. Get the car over to the left as soon as you can. Breaking at the two. Down to second gear. Nice and gentle with the throttle here. Use the curb, then off, then back on. A little bit of trail brake. Then accelerate when you're on the apex. Move the car over to the right. We're looking for that white line. Just after the three. There it is. Down two gears. Use a bit of this curb on the inside. It's nice and cambered. Get on the gas early. Then we're looking for the number two and the dark piece of rubber on curb on the right hand side. You will see it when you start looking for it. So we'll move the car over to the left. And we're going to be braking right about now. Nice and gentle. Looking for the tree on exit. There it is. That means that we're going to be bang on for the apex on the exit. So a bit of trail brake just to get us back to the apex here. Then back on the gas. Leave it in third gear. Trail brake to the apex. Then accelerate. Braking at the two. Turning quite late. Use the AstroTurf on the exit. We'll try and pick up the pace a little bit now. So hook the left-hand side over the hill, then move the car over to the right. We're going to be braking. Nice and gentle with our downshifts. Be nice and patient. Wait for the apex to come to us. Move the car over to the left, braking at the two. Second gear, trail braking, then get on the gas to the apex, but nice and gentle. Back on the curve for this one. A little bit of trail brake, then get on the gas. You can use that curb on the right, it doesn't really matter too much. We'll move the car over to the right-hand side. Just after the three, we're going to be breaking down two gears. Nice and tight. Get on the gas early. Use the curb on exit. Looking for the two and the darker piece of curb on the right. Keep turning right. Uh, left, sorry. So the run up the hill. So we're going to be breaking just before the curb. Nice and gentle. Down the first gear. Look for the tree. There it is. Short shift to second. Accelerate all the way around. Then when you get to about here, we're going to be trail braking to the apex. Then back on the gas hard. Move the car over to the left. Just at the start of the curb, we're going to be trail braking. The apex and back on the gas. And we're braking at the two. Don't get greedy here. Really easy to do. Use this astral turf on the exit. There we go. That's a steady lap around Laguna Seca. It's really easy to... Push on a little bit too much. Turn one, or sorry, turn two. Especially, you see a lot of people are, uh, people are breaking themselves going into turn number two. The same with turn number three. People will run wide and exit. It's an absolute minefield. It's a, a track that you've got to remain disciplined at. Don't overdrive is my advice for this week because it's such a tricky circuit. Much more tricky than people give it credit for. So, let's talk about pit entry, pit exit. What I think you can get overtake done this week at Laguna Seca. So, pit entry and pit exit at Laguna Seca is really quite difficult. It's probably the worst pit entry, pit exit combination on iRacing because there's a horrible turn entering the pits and then there's a horrible turn exiting the pits. So, we'll show you it slow time, first of all. So we approach it as we would normally do on a normal flying lap. The car will be over to the left hand side. We enter pit lane and there's a yellow line going across the road surface. That's what we're going to use or a white line as our braking marker. So just about on the white line, we're going to be braking hard down to first gear, get the pit limiter on. But here you want your car right over on the right hand side. Be careful you don't touch this gravel on the right hand side. Because we need to open this left. But we'll have our pit limiter on at this point. And then nice and tight around here. And there's the yellow cone. It's a horrible pit entry. So as long as you get your pit limiter on. And you break at that point. It's all about negotiating that left turn. Right, I'll show you that on a flying lap. Right, so you just approach pit entry. Just as you would on a normal flying lap. The car will be over to the left hand side. We're looking for that line across the... The road surface there on the brakes, pit limiter on and get it turned. Not pretty. That's as pretty as it's going to get at Laguna Seca. Really, really difficult. You can 
lose lots of time by being a little bit cautious there. But by just attacking it, you can gain probably two or three tenths quite easily. So pit exit then. Quite difficult. This part really easy. So pit limiter off, accelerate. We're going to be flat out all the way down here until these bollards on the right hand side end there. Then you've got to be careful with this turn here because it's off camber. It's got sand on either side. If you don't stick to the road, the tarmac, then you are off. So nice and gentle round here. Just trail breaking. Keep an eye on your relative. Because those guys that are on a flying lap, just when we exit the pit lane area, they're going to be moving their car over to the left. So just bear that in mind. Keep an eye on your relative. At the end of those orange bollards on the right-hand side, that's going to be your braking area to make sure you get it stopped. We go around that left turn. Right. Where can we overtake a Laguna Seca? So overtaking at Laguna Seca, it's really, really difficult. And a lot of the time you're relying on people making mistakes. So as a chasing car, it's your responsibility or what you need to do is make them make a mistake. And it's all about car position, where you put your car, what you do with it. Get them to think about what's going on behind, looking in their mirror rather than concentrating on what's in front and making sure they hit their braking markers. So turn one is obviously a big overtaking opportunity. Chances are somebody's going to defend going into turn number one. But all you can do is try and make them think that you're going to go for a move uh, on the inside. They'll defend, then you'll shift right over to the left-hand side and you'll try and drop it in deep and try and go around the outside. That probably won't work, but they won't get a very good exit coming out of uh, turn number two. So what you need to try and do is try and cut it back if you can and get a, an overtake done on the exit. But again, it's not going to be easy. Your only option then is probably around the outside, turn number three. And that's really tricky. Turn number four is no go, really. People do make mistakes. People do quite often run wide here, lose a little bit of traction. That will then give you an opportunity going up into turn number five. Watch that. People do push a little bit too much going into turn number four. Now, what I would suggest, you want to try and make somebody make a mistake in the kink. That's what you want to do. So you want to try and focus on your exit out of turn number five because you want them to think you're going to go for a move into the kink. So try and nail your exit turn number five and get right on their back bumper going up towards the kink. Just as you approach it, move your car over, then back. That'll be enough to, want to make them wonder what you're going to do. That will then hopefully compromise their entry into the kink, make them run wide, and you're going to get the move done on the way up to the corkscrew. Like I said at the beginning, there's no real places where you can get an overtake done here. It's notoriously difficult to overtake without the car in front making a mistake. You've always got to be applying that pressure. Yes, there's overtaking going to be done going into the corkscrew, but that only works if both of you are going to play ball. Either on the inside or the outside works here into the corkscrew. If you've got the inside line, chances are he's going to hold the outside line around this section and here, which will force you out wide here. But then that means... You've got the inside line into turn number nine. And you should get the move done. But then turn number ten. Again, you will see a few lunges here. Be careful of that. People will dive bomb here. But again, think about your exit coming out of turn number ten. And try and get the move done into turn number eleven. But if you can't get it done, this is another perfect opportunity to make them think that you're going to go for a move. Make them defend here. If they want to defend going into turn number 11, fine. Because all we're going to be thinking about at this point is the exit and the run all the way up the hill through turn one and trying to overtake into turn number two. So they're defending there. Let's take a really late apex for this one and smash the gas and get on the gas nice and early. Annihilate them going up the straight. 
Because their exit is going to be absolutely terrible if they try and defend going into the final turn. So, overtaken, Laguna Seca, not easy. It's all about putting the pressure on, getting them to make a mistake. There we go. That's week nine done here at Laguna Seca. Please let me know down below in the comments how you get on. What were your times before the guide? What were your times after? Did I help? Did I cover everything that you wanted to be covered in a track guide? Just bear in mind what I said. It's really easy to get greedy here at Laguna Seca. So remain disciplined. Stick to your braking markers. Hopefully, people will get greedy and miss theirs to enable you to make a move. Also, it's not really easy to overtake. Just put your car in a position which makes the guy in front look in his mirror rather than looking at the track in front of him. Next week, week 10, we go to the Hungaro Ring, a track which I'm not that familiar with. So I need to roll my sleeves up and get some practice done this week. So hopefully see you on track. Thank you for watching. Keep it pinned.